Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Hope you guys are doing okay today. My name is Andrew and today we're going to just kind of touch base on what's been going on with the economy. As a lot of you might have noticed, the markets have kind of bounced up in the last week. That's largely due to the retail numbers. I'll actually click on that right here for you. So the thing is about retail numbers, we're going to see recently, let's we'll zoom into a year chart. We see this huge mongous gain of 17.7% .7 in retail sales. The reason why you have to keep in mind the reason this has happened is because we look back in April and March and there's just huge declines. And if you go back to even like a 25 year chart, you see that those kind of swings have never happened in history. So yes, it's a good sign to see that now the economy is opened back up, people are going back to work, people are spending money. So as a result, retail numbers have gone up. And one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these retail numbers are due to online sales, not because of physical locations, which is kind of a cool, it's a different uh, change in the supply chain and how people tend to spend money, which you know is a good thing. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on it. It's, it's one of the reasons why we saw the markets bounce about 3% earlier this week. They've kind of tinkled around since then. Moving on, we are going to be talking a little bit about the Fed. So recently, some of you might have heard that the Fed is buying into the bond market. One reason why I think this is kind of dangerous is the Federal Reserve is willing to buy fallen angels as well as companies that just aren't doing well. The way the markets work is when a company is, say, low in cash or is worried about its production as a company, they're going to issue debt in the form of bonds. They're going to offer to the public, say they offer uh, $2 billion and they want to raise this money and they're offering a 4% interest rate. Well, some people might find that interesting if it's a good company and it has a good balance sheet. Well, why not dump an extra $2 billion into it and guarantee a 4% return? The thing is, is that right now with all the economic uncertainty, it's kind of a dangerous thing and a lot of these companies are releasing debt and no one's buying. And so what, what's the answer? Well, now the Fed's going to come in with $750 billion worth of corporate debt. They're willing to buy even individual stocks as well as broad index ETFs that buy just a broad batch of different debt from different companies. In my opinion, I understand the concept of supporting and lifting up these companies when they're in desperate times for cash. But at the same time, I think it's a little bit deadly to do something like that. I think it's dangerous for the U.S. economy as well as dangerous in general just because you're basically zombifying markets. When you're buying debt from, say, fallen angels or companies that are negative triple B rated, which is they're basically willing to buy junk bonds, we're running into an issue of these companies that probably should go bankrupt aren't going to go bankrupt just because the Federal Reserve decided that they're going to buy out any company that's not doing well as long as they were okay up until March 23rd, is that, if I remember correctly, is the date that they're cutting off. That's the market lows. Um, so we'll kind of see where this goes. This can kind of stall out a market because the Federal Reserve is getting too into the market. They're interacting too much with the day-to-day -day operations. They're not supposed to do that. The only thing they are really allowed to control is the yield curves as well as treasury funds. So they can buy and sell as many treasuries as they want. What a treasury is, it's a bond by the U.S. government. So it's basically a very secure bond that they're guaranteed to get paid back or to buy off individuals. I honestly think that they should just stick to treasuries and let these fallen angels fall. Um, but I understand the concept of kind of propping up these companies that shouldn't go under just because of an economic crisis. And you also run into the issue of if you do take these companies out of the economy, well, what's going to happen? Well, now there's a void and these bigger corporations like Amazon or really any of the big Fortune 500 companies that have its extra cash flow and stability will swoop in and kind of monopolize markets. So the concept makes sense, but I still think it's a dangerous water to be treading. With that, guys, I would like to touch base a little bit on Hertz because it's been in the news recently. A lot of people keep talking about it, and I kind of want to give my two cents on the company. So if you look over here on Google, we're going to see this is the stock price currently. It's about $1.80 a share. It fell 10% today, which is not really surprising. We have to remember that this company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy back in May. And we see that since it filed, it basically the entire stock collapsed. If we go to a five-year chart, we're going to see this company is basically losing value constantly they were tinkering with bankruptcy for a while we see that from 2017 all the way to the recent crisis they basically flatlined no growth no potential their balance sheets had way too much debt on them they were over leveraged and this is why it's important to always know what you're investing in and unfortunately for a lot of individuals especially retail investors and what that means is retail investing just means everyday citizens like me and you any individual who has a brokerage firm account, wants to invest money, they're a retail investor. Just because they're not institutional, 
So a lot of retail investors started flooding into the stock, hoping to be able to pick the bottom, which is a dangerous thing to do. We have to remember this company is going bankrupt. They have no money. Their demand is basically non-existent. They're over leveraged. They have too much debt. And we saw that the stock skyrocketed all the way to June 8th, 887%. Now, yes, that is absolutely ridiculous. And if you were lucky enough to somehow pick the bottom anywhere in this dollar range and sell out of the at the $5 range, good for you. Really all you did was a lucky trade and I applaud you for it because I wasn't willing to do it. Obviously we can see since it peaked, it fell an additional 67%. And that's really just due to the fact that it's not really a profitable company. They're offering more shares to the public. And as a result, since they've been offering those shares, they even said themselves that the extra $500 million in shares that they're offering is basically worthless. That they, you know, before you, a common stock shareholder, gets anything from the company, they have to pay out their bonds, pay off their debts, they get preferred shares, and then all the way at the bottom is regular shares, which is what you would own if you bought into this company. In the last month, we've seen almost a billion dollars get dumped into the stock, which is really sad. A lot of people are thinking they're bottom picking or they're buying this bankrupt company, but it's just not the case. The company's not going anywhere, and the money you put into it will go nowhere. Right down here, we're gonna see a chart. This is basically showing the stock price right here is in pink, just kind of going up and down. We know the recent crash and filed for bankruptcy right down here. And the green line is going to be the amount of Robinhood users who started buying into the stock. The reason why this is kind of really sad to see is a lot of these people are buying, not knowing what they're getting into. And ultimately, most of them who bought into the stock are losing money and will continue to lose money because it's not a good company to get in. This is a reason why I always say if you're new to the market, you should really just buy and hold and buy and hold ETFs, you know, broad index funds. You can buy sectors if you want, but ultimately, if you're new to the game, please don't go out and buy individual stocks like this, hoping to make a big profit. At that point, you're basically just gambling. You're not investing. So again, what would I suggest for anyone who's new into the market? Well, I've had a lot of questions from people that I know who have been watching my videos and just kind of curious what to buy. I recommend just open up a brokerage firm. They're very easy to set up. It takes no more than five minutes to do. And you could do something as simple as this right here, the Vanguard ETF VOO. This is an S&P 500. It's the 500 biggest companies in basically the United States. It pays out a dividend of 2%. That means every year, just by holding the company or holding this ETF, you don't have to do anything with it. At the end of the year, they're gonna pay you almost 2% just for holding the stock, which is great. That's why investors love dividends so much. It's also, you can see the market cap with this. This is just the number of shares basically adding up how much value there is in this specific ETF, which in this one is a lot because it's one of the biggest funds out there. But realistically, if we go to a five-year chart, we can still see even with the recent crash, there's still 50% growth with this ETF. It's, you know, it's steady. It moves with the broader market. And it, no, you're not going to get rich overnight, but this is a great fund to be in. And I recommend anyone who isn't, invested something as simple as this is just phenomenal and over the long run it's going to produce great gains it's just about patience like the, the name of the game is time 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 it's not timing the market it's just time in the market you the longer you're in the better off you're going to be most people are thinking that you know investing is getting into day trading buying and selling you know the whole phrase buy it low sell it highs so yeah it sounds great and all but if you look at average day traders, they don't do anything with their money. Most of them lose money. And even people who are hedge fund managers or uh, portfolio managers, most of them can't even beat the something as simple as this, an S&P 500 index fund that any individual can buy. You can buy this whole list and you'll do better than 90% of active managers out there. To prove my point that index funds are phenomenal and they can beat almost every active manager, back in 2007 and 2008, Warren Buffett, the great man, the myth, the legend, if you don't know him, he's worth $71 billion. One of the richest investors. He's a long-term investor. He's all about compound interest, about buying and holding positions and investing in good companies regardless of what the market is doing. Made a bet back in 2007, 2008 to any active manager who wanted to beat the S&P 500 he, over a 10-year span, he would pay them a million dollars. Well, how did it turn out? Let's go look at the chart. So these are different funds that these um, managers had offered as well as hedge funds that assumed they could do outgrow the market. And this over a nine year span, we can see 
none of them, you know, the best fund was 62%. That's not bad. But if you look at the index fund of the S&P 500, it gained 85%. That's without doing anything. That's just buying, holding, and either consistently investing or just holding a position still beats almost every active manager. doesn't mean that there are managers out there who can't beat the market, but the whole point is you shouldn't try to beat the market. Don't listen to someone who says they can double your money in six months because it just doesn't happen. If they're doing that, they're either lucky or they're scamming you. And in this, he ended up not having to pay anyone a million dollars because no one could beat the simple fund that is completely passive, has a super low expense ratio, and doesn't really do anything besides hold the positions it's in. So this is just to prove my point that no matter how amazing you are investing, if you just buy and hold and you buy either good companies or a simple index fund if you're new, or even a long-term investor, like I said, buy, hold, you know, and everything will be fine. With that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be doing another one. I'm, I think I'm going to start doing these once a week, kind of sharing my thoughts on the markets, what's going on. I love to answer questions, so if you do have questions, please leave a comment below. I will respond as best I can, and if you want me to make a video about anything specific, just leave a comment. It doesn't, doesn't have to be a complex comment. It could be as simple as how to open up a savings account. It's totally fine. I'm here to answer and help anyone who wants to help. With that, I uh, hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video.